And now I'm happy to present George Lee, the Hack Technical Manager, who will give you an overview of the tools you need to participate and share your solutions with the Technical Review Committee on November 13th. George, are you there now? Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, let's see. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so I'm George Lee. Um, I am the um, kind of technical lead judge on, um, for the hack. Um, so I think I've been doing this, what has been like four years now, um, something like that. Um, so um, so the slide deck is kind of adapted um, from the previous one, um, but there are um, some slight changes um, that we can kind of discuss. Um, so what we're going to be covering is um, kind of Slack, GitHub, um, and then one of the requirements in your technical solution is deployment. And what that entails is um, making your solution uh, publicly available. Um, I'll kind of go over what that might look like in the you know, example where you're developing code on GitHub um, and maybe want to deploy something. Um, and much of this is um, covered on the Hack website as well. Um, so the first tool is Slack. Um, many of you uh, have already joined. Um, and it's a communication platform for all things Hack related. Um, through this, you can communicate with us, the organizing committee, um, technical judges, challenge sponsors, or you know, anybody else who's really participating in the Hack. Um, there's also the kind of default location for all communication in the hackathon. So announcements will be made there rather than doing email blasts or anything. So uh, it's pretty important to have Slack open, um, not only for the communications about announcements for the hackathon, but maybe you know, we do occasionally send out reminders um, if you need to. Yeah, if you need to communicate with the challenge sponsors or the challenge sponsors have um, something that they want to share that's um, also something that will be on, that was something that we can facilitate through Slack. Um, and finally, of course, there's no, there's no cost to join. Um, so many of you just got the link um, and joined. Um, I think if you haven't, um, suggest that you um, do so sooner rather than later. Um, so overall in the guidelines, um, please follow the code of conduct uh, as outlined in the hack rules. Um, we do suggest asking questions in your respective challenge channels. Um, you may be tempted to maybe direct a message. Um, some of them I would um, highly recommend just posting in the challenge channels, mostly for other people to kind of to kind of learn. And if you're a challenge sponsor and you receive an interesting question via um, direct message, um, I would encourage you to kind of reshare that. You don't need to share necessarily who um, who said it, but I mean, I would recommend um, just sharing it to everybody to, so, you know, everybody kind of gets that um, feedback. So. Um, don't expect answers immediately. Um, I think many challenge sponsors um, have day jobs um, and technical judges and organizers have uh, day jobs too. Uh, well, um, for things that are kind of getting in your way and blocking you, we'll try our best to kind of answer those questions kind of immediately, um, but, or as soon as possible, but it's um, not always going to be just that, you know, we're gonna respond right away, so. Um, but yes, um, for challenge sponsors, um, we understand um, it's something in addition to your day job. Um, do um, try to ask questions in a timely manner, um, but if you, um, you know, you know, keep Slack open in the background or something, um, or um, maybe in the evening, maybe spend a little time to check, um, something like that, so. All right. And George, I just want you to uh, be aware that we now have a pro version of Slack and um, they're able to do huddles and uh, I'll probably, nice. If they're interested, I will be uh, setting up uh, private channels for their teams if they want them. Awesome. Oh, we've, we've, we've gone big this year, right? So. <laughs> That's sponsorship for you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so GitHub, GitHub is um, 
if you don't know what GitHub is, it's a source code management platform. Um, it's kind of one of the big ones. Um, I'm sure um, if you um, looked for technical solutions, you probably encountered GitHub um, at one point or another. Um, for the purposes of the hack, it's a central place to host your code, um, so you can work with so you can work with your teammates. Um, so, yeah. So if you're working on your project and you like, you know, need to share your solutions. Um, I mean, there were, you know, the old school ways to like send it around via email, but um, GitHub kind of gives you a central place to have, like, a version of your code. Other people can pull it down. Other people can push updates to it. Um, and this is important too, is when we get to um, actual technical review time, that it will be the place that the technical judges will go to kind of evaluate your code um, you know, for, for a technical review and um, give you feedback and all that stuff. Um, all team members um, participating in the hack uh, must have a GitHub account. This should be part of the registration process. Um, Processes as you form your teams, I will um, start creating GitHub accounts as part of a um, organization I've already created called TAC 2023. Um, I will assign um, permissions and users to those GitHub repositories. So you have permissions to um, push code or publish code on, on GitHub. Uh, for challenge sponsors specifically, um, you're not required to have a GitHub account. Um, if you do have one, um, I, I actually haven't created a data repository. I forgot about that. But um, if you do have data that you'd like to share, um, one option is to up upload to Slack in your um, respective channels. Um, but we can also kind of have a central repository for it as well on GitHub. Um, so. Um, if you do have a GitHub account, you can you can set, set up a data repository for channel sponsors to upload data and other participants to be able to pull um, data from it. Um, if you don't have a GitHub account, you can send data to me in Slack. Um, so then I can upload it to that repository. And yeah, once, and once the chance starts, um, please do share your data in your um, respective channels channels. All right. Um, yeah, so I kind of already kind of went over this. So once your team has decided, um, let me know. Um, we'll create a GitHub repository in the Hack 2023 uh, organization. Um, all applicants should have a license. Um, in, there's a license file in your repository. Um, this will typically be MIT. Um, I can probably just add that for you. Um, but yeah, keep that in there. Um, having any sort of secret or proprietary code code that's you know maybe um, used in your application but not published anywhere, maybe you know referenced. Um, so unless maybe you're making an API call to a backend that has code that we're not um, we're not able to see, um, that may um, disqualify you from the competition. Um, the spirit is that your solutions are. Um, open source and um, can be extended and um, really for us to see. And it's also part of technical judging. We need to be able to see um, what you've done. Uh, for technical review, we we'll also want to be able to test your running application. Um, I, if it's like a web application, it should be hosted somewhere. Um, for like Salesforce apps or low, no code apps, we may um, need your um, authentication credentials or something to be able to test your solution, like on some web interface. Um, in the past, we've had mobile apps. Um, that one is a little bit tricky. We'll probably, like for technical review, we typically schedule a live demo for that. Um, but um, as you come up with your solutions and you find, and you have questions about how to make your application available for the technical reviewers to test, um, please just you know, reach out um, to me or um, tell me and we can kind of work with you to figure that out. And of course, if you have issues with your repository, um, need additional permissions for uh, some tool that you're using, I'll typically get an email um, and I'll 
try to approve it as they come in. But if you have any other issues, um, just yeah, let us know. All right, um, so deployment, oh, I was gonna work on the slide, but I didn't actually um, get there. Um, so, um, but instead of like, well, I didn't need a real deployment slide. I can just go into this demo. So uh, in this demo, I'm just gonna create an app, um, a real quick app, push to a GitHub repository and um, deploy it using Vercel. Um, I did not have a chance to practice it this year. So this is gonna be interesting. Let's see. So, oh. uh, before you move on, um, there was a question about the uh, GitHub repository. Um, I did create a field for them to put their GitHub names in, and then there was a field for the GitHub repository, which I made required, which was probably incorrect. Um, I guess I was thinking okay. that you would already have GitHub repositories that you would be using. So if that was an error, I will correct that. Uh, even if you put one in there uh, or put to be determined at the moment, uh, I'll work that out with George and uh, fix the form if you haven't completed it yet. If you've completed the form, uh, I'll circle back around and make sure you get a corrected uh, GitHub name. So for the hack I've been on it. So. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, um, apologies for that. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, I'll, we will have a GitHub repository in a um, organization, so just to keep it all in kind of one place. Um, so, so I'll make corrections right. there. Thank you for. I didn't know that was a diff. I didn't realize that that was how it worked because I don't usually manage this portion, Samuel. So <laughs> thank you for the update, and uh, I will correct that. Uh, at while well, you guys are all in the uh, uh, breakout rooms, I will be fixing that with George's help. Um, let me maybe step back. Um, so I'm going to use this service called Vercel. Um, I'm already logged in. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So I wanted to get to like the top level page, but since I'm logged in, okay. Well, whichever. Um, so I will start a project um, in terminal. So um, I'm going to create a Next.js app. And this is just like for demonstration, like this is one way you can create an app and deploy it. This is not necessarily um, the only way. I mean, there's probably um, hundreds or thousands of ways to do it. I'm just kind of giving a quick um, demo of what like an app then that's publicly available, what that kind of looks like and kind of what we're looking for um, as solutions. Um, so this, so I'll just run this command. So this is a Node.js based app. So it's gonna run a create script. Um, ask me a bunch of questions. Um, I'll just call this demo app. Um, I think it's TypeScript. Um, I'm cool with that, ESLint. Um, tailwind, um, just take all the recommendations here. Okay. And it's going to compile, pull down a bunch of dependencies. Okay. So I will go down to I trust these people. Okay. Um, all right. So um, this is a um, Next.js app. Um, so this is just like the boilerplate. I can run, let me do a terminal down here. What was there? Um, so I can do npm run dev. Contact my. Oh, okay. 
Okay, so um, if I look at localhost 3001, so here's my app. Um, so this is um, what it is. So I am going to, um, first, I have a repository set up already um, called demo app. So I already created this ahead of time. So I'm just, I already have an existing repository. So I'm going to add, I'm just going to copy these commands down here. Um, run those. All right. Um, so I pushed those changes up to GitHub. So now if I refresh this, they'll be there. Um, so these are the files, the readme, um, everything that was just on my um, Visual Studio Code screen here. Uh, I will close this, go to the dashboard, um, to a tip, so I'm going to add a new project. So I'm going to add a Git repository. So the repository is this demo app. Man. I did not even do this before. Okay, configure project, demo app. Um, so I'll deploy it. And it's going through. Right. It's been a while since I've done this, a long time. All right. Yeah, so um, again, just example, oh, just, just jump to this. Um, all right, so, um, so now this app is publicly available, which means I could copy and paste this into chat. You can see the chat window anywhere. Uh, yeah. Zoom befuddles me. Okay, um, I will stop sharing and then see if I can bring up the chat. Right. So now that's that's a URL. Um, oh, I direct message somebody. I'm so sorry. Um, I do not mean to do that. Everyone in meeting. Okay, um, so this is kind of an example, like when we do the submission process, um, you, you have your GitHub repository, we have the code um, visible, so a technical um, reviewer will jump in, um, see what you did. Obviously, I'm gonna get a zero because I just committed boilerplate code right now. But um, so this is the repository. We want the um, publicly available application uh, which is here, and if you click on that link in chat, um, you will also um, you'll see that as well. Uh, let me go back to the desktop. Cool. Um, yeah, so jumping back to the presentation. Cool. So yeah, and so in the demo, I create an I create a new app, push to get push it to a GitHub repository. So that satisfies the requirement of having your code pushed up to um, the hack organization, and then I made it publicly available using Vercel. Um, kind of walk through the process there, and um, again, this is not like to say. This, again, this is not the only way to do it. There's many ways to deploy your application. 
Uh, so with Salesforce, I personally don't have a lot of experience with Salesforce, but your Salesforce, a Salesforce solution will get deployed differently. Um, if you're taking advantage of um, the tools from our many hackathon sponsors like Microsoft, if you're using Azure to host something, obviously deployment looks different uh, there as well. And you might be using their database solutions or whichever. So, um, so as far as like tools go, like it, um, it's kind of open-ended. Um, the requirement is that, yeah, we, we are able to see your code and we are able to see it running somewhere. Um, so I do always suggest that um, you should try something new or, I mean, if you haven't, if you haven't done it before, obviously it's all going to be, anything's going to be new to you. So, um, you know, kind of, that's, a, that's one whole experience, but if you're kind of experienced professional, um, personally I've done in the past is just tinkered around, tried something I was interested in, tried something new, tried something different, um, and, you know, just kind of have fun with it, really. So as, as George was saying that if you um, are using a no code, low code, Google, uh, Microsoft, Salesforce, um, ServiceNow, how you deploy that will be different, but you still need to give it, uh, put it someplace where it's easy for the um, tech review person to see it. That's one. And you need to put it someplace that's easy for us to grab so you can do a live demonstration of your solution on presentation day when you pass. So those are the two reasons to have it somewhere that people, we can access it, not just, you know, like on your computer somewhere, uh, the likelihood that we'll be able to hook your computer up to the screens is gonna be questionable. So the deployment, for the tech judges, so you pass the tech judges and once they're for the live demo is gonna be really important. Yep, absolutely. And um, we, um, I mean, we can't, it's hard for us to really provide assistance in deployment because everybody uses different things and you know how you're doing it um i may not be familiar i honestly if you used the azure stack i would have absolutely no idea how to do it but maybe the microsoft i mean obviously the microsoft people would um so if you need help in that direction and some guidance um you can maybe hit up the challenge sponsors but um and sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's like um but we kind of really do need it uh, to actually see a solution. And like Kamal says, like, you know, when you get to the actual presentation, we can't have it running off of your computer just because it's not like, it's hard to, um, we're not gonna get that connected to our in-person presentations, so. Yeah. Um, so you want to go over how to join and um, submit because it's new. Sure. Um, okay, so let's why don't you stop sharing your screen for a second? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to quickly share my screen just so we can go through this. And uh, some of this is a little new to George too, because we kind of when we when we lost Hack Hui and Dev Post, we got a little uh, creative. Me and the ETS team and. <laughs> Uh, I reviewed it with George and, and a few others, but uh, it's a work in progress, as you know. So uh, the hack has a registration link and all the details are here of the changes. Uh, there are two forms that have to be completed. Uh, the individual one, that's where you accept the terms of the, you know, I agree to follow the code and follow the rules process. After you finish that, you then, if you're a minor, it'll ask you to fill out the parent permission form. Uh, and then to register as a team, and I just, I fixed this while we were online. The, uh, uh, I, I left a, a holder for us for the, for the GitHub repository, but it's no longer required. So this is where you fill this out. Uh, you describe your project. It has the correct challenge choices now. And this is where you put your teammates. 
please use the same email address that they registered, used, uh, used to register so that I know that that person is in compliance. And then the other thing that's really gonna be important is, uh, and, and this is, um, go back here, more. This, this form is also here on this screen right there. So uh, when you reach the point, it's not gonna be buried and hidden somewhere or secret. You'll, you'll um, oh, sorry, I opened the wrong form. <laughs> Excuse me while I, uh, uh, hang on, I'm gonna stop sharing while I open the correct form. One moment, forgive me, too many forms. Uh, second, one second. Okay, let's try this again. So there's a form called the uh, Hack 2023 Project Submission. It explains to you things. Uh, obviously GitHub is, I don't know what else you use it for. If you're using Salesforce or one of the low code, no code, I don't know if you even need GitHub. I'll let George answer that. You need to use the email address uh, that, that fills in automatically, your team name, your team captain's name. Team name, that's all I care about. I don't care what you called your application. I want your team name, because that's how I'm matching things together. What your solution does, how it was built, and there are subsections. So if you pick um, that you were did a low, uh, a low code, no code, you're gonna be took along a different path than if you do a, a coded solution. So this is what you fill out. Uh, again, the short answer for the GitHub repository, you'll have that by then. Uh, George will supply that to you on Slack, I guess. George? Yeah, you do that. And invites will go out from- You want me to make this not required? Yeah. Should I not make this required? Oh, for submission? Actually, for submission, I think it is required. Okay. That's fine. So um, anyway, so that, that this is the form you'll be looking for. And the important part is, is it's right here, okay? This is to register as a team, and this is to register once you have a team and you've built something and you want to submit it for technical review. That's the form right there. All right. All right. That's all I had, George. Anything all right. else? Right. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything else. I did see in the chat that um Jules over at Microsoft um offered to yeah, join the Slack channel to join the conversation on the Azure stack. And um if you've never done um, any sort of deployment or web application deployment before, I definitely check that out. Um, that's awesome. I suggest um, learning from them. I and mean, when else are you gonna, how often are you gonna have direct interface with somebody at Microsoft? Yeah. Um, and and uh, if you're a professional and maybe you're just interested in Azure, um, I am, but I afraid I don't have time to join, but uh, I would totally love to like sit in and yeah check that out too. Yeah, you have four weeks worth of dedicated Google, Salesforce, Microsoft, uh, eWorld people who are here to help you and guide you. Uh, and um, you will see, I have a our pitch presenter works for Microsoft. They met, you know, he got impacted by uh, the various um, you know, he he gained confidence from the the challenge spot uh, from the hackathon. Uh, as you heard earlier today, one of the the uh, Tyler people uh, with what uh, started out as an intern at uh, Tyler Hawaii and now is working with them, uh, and he met them through the hack. So th this is a great opportunity to meet people in professions that you want. So don't be shy. Go talk to them on their channels. Don't be shy. And that's the same with the challenge sponsors. These are types of people who are also looking for potential employees down the line. So go talk to them. Be interactive. Be out there. So anyway, that's that's enough of that. I'll I'll stop there. Particularly since it's four o'clock and we want to let you get into the breakout rooms. Thank you, George. Cool. Thank you, everyone. Good luck. Okay, thank you again, George. That was great.